Cool. Okay. So our devotion today was based off of a couple, they gave a couple scriptures. So I looked them up. Psalm 89 verse 15, which is blessed are those who have learned to acclaim you who walk in the light of your presence. O Lord, they rejoice in your name all day long. They exalt you in righteousness for you are their glory and strength. And by your favor, you exalt our horn. And then it also said John 16, verse 33. So I looked that up quick too. And that one says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. And the devotion that goes with it is approach problems with a light touch. When your mind moves toward a problem area, you tend to focus on that situation so intensely that you lose sight of me. You pit yourself against the difficulty as if you had to conquer it immediately. Your mind gears up for battle, and your body becomes tense and anxious. Unless you achieve total victory, you feel defeated. There is a better way. When a problem starts to overshadow your thoughts, bring this matter to me. Talk with me about it and look at it in the light of my presence. This puts some much needed space between you and your concern, enabling you to see from my perspective. You will be surprised at the results. Sometimes you may even laugh at yourself for being so serious about something so insignificant. You will always face trouble in this life, but more importantly, you will always have me with you, helping you to handle whatever you encounter. Approach problems with a light touch by viewing them in my revealing light. I thought that was so good. Such a great reminder. Are you hearing? Can you hear me? Yeah? You're freezing up a little bit. Okay. Yeah, it does say my internet is unstable. Am I okay now? Yeah. All right. Let's just dive right in. And let's go right okay. into chapter 16, which is responsibility. If you won't carry the ball, you can't lead the team. So I'm just going to quick, quick go back to what we learned in um, 13, 14, and 15, because this has been such a good book. I have like learned so much stuff. 13 was about positive attitude. If you believe you can, you can. Um, then 14, just to kind of backtrack a little bit as we're working on all these skills, was problem solving. You can't let your problems be a problem. And 15 was relationships. If you get along, they'll go along. So the most important single ingredient, ingredient in the formula of success is knowing how to get along with people. So that was really awesome. So let's dive right into 16 being with responsibility. Success on any major scale requires you to ex accept responsibility. In the final analysis, the one quality that all successful people have is the ability to take on responsibility. So a leader can give up anything except final responsibility. So I don't know if you had anything marked for that, but it goes into the whole Alamo thing. Um, and that uh, the, the young, I forget what his name was, the Texan, his name was James Bonham. And uh, he, he uh, went on the mission at night, made his way 95 miles for help. Um, I don't know if you read all that. Yeah. Did you have anything to say about that at all? Anything highlighted? Uh, not that part, I didn't. Okay, so basically that whole thing was he stayed there the whole time. His sense of responsibility was too great. Instead, he rode back to the Alamo, made his way through enemy lines, and joined the co his comrades so that he could stand, fight, and die with them. So fleshing it out, I had people now focus more, it's saying people now more fo focus more on their rights than on their responsibilities. Oh, do we see that today, especially with the election and everything. Reflecting on current attitudes, my friend Had Haddon Robinson observes, if you want to get rich, invest in victimization. It is America's fastest growing industry. He points out that millions of people are becoming rich by identifying, representing, interviewing, treating, ensuring, and counseling victims. Good leaders never embrace a victim mentality. 
They recognize that who and where they are remain their responsibility, not that of their parents, their spouses, their children, the government, their bosses, or their coworkers. They face whatever life throws at them and give it their best knowing that they will get an opportunity to lead the team only if they've proved that they can carry the ball. I was like, oh, that's really good. Do you have anything that you want to chat with? I mean, I got tons of stuff highlighted as we keep moving. I, I'd, um, I had put uh, for point one, they get the job done. Um, I highlighted the whole part. Uh, one millionaire has asked why he worked 12 to 14 hours a day. And he answered, it took me 15 years working for large organizations to realize that in our society, you work eight hours a day for survival. And if you work only eight hours a day, all you do is survive. Everything over eight hours is an investment in your future. And I guess that, that really, kind of like we touched on, uh, was that two days ago? And that leadership zone, you know, we're talking about you know, like Becky is staying up till four in the morning. Okay, I know I will never, I would get sick if I stay up till four in the morning, but just the idea of, um, and Stacey said it too, just the intent of the power hour, you know, like, um, you know, being a working mom and then trying to take it to the next level, it, it should be in a power hour probably too, you know. One thing that I, so many of these things that I read, like, and this is not, not an excuse at all. Someday I would love to see what this would be like if I did this without working. Like if I had eight hours during the day and could focus, um, right now I'm so, and I think you kind of touched on it, you even said it, the other chapter too, so, you know, building relationships and stuff, like if I, I'm so affected, and that's like what you said in the devotion this morning, I'm so affected by the external of what's going on in my life right now that I have all this other stuff I feel floating around me that is so affecting it works, you know, like, and I, I know it probably sounds like an excuse, but it's all encompassing and it's, you know, so like I read that and that's just, we do, you know, especially all of us that are working you know, Stacey and all of us that do work or, you know, and that, and like I know Kayla right now, she just, you know, had a doctor's appointment and the doctor told her, you need to take it easy. You know, so now she, she wants to push forward, but now the doctor's saying, you got to take it easy. You're having like cramps already, you know, like all this stuff. And so I think she too, she, you get all this stuff around you mm -hmm. that pushes out your intent is good. And sucked in by life so I mean like that 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 just hits me that yes this is never going to go anywhere unless I and I know you said it a million times and I've heard it a million times and every time when I'm ready to push like every time I'm ready to push then life throws me something else but like the devotion said you know I'm where's my focus by yes I'm focused on my family and getting it better but yeah yeah, I know the struggle. Hashtag, Sorry, the struggle, hashtag the struggle is real. <laughs> you know, it is a every single day thing. And, you know, people don't like me to hear this, say this, but that is, got, that is the devil's way of distracting as well. I mean, that's his way of saying, oh, you think you're going to go for that? I think I'll throw this in your lap and see, do you really believe, do you really trust that God's going to, that God has this, that, you know what, that I'm going to be faithful to put my power hour in, even when everything's going on, I'm going to still focus because I know that this is what our, our family needs. Um, I mean, I think of that all the time where, you know, distractions come up and serious, serious, serious stuff that you're like, oh my goodness. And I just love how the devotion said, instead of talking and worrying so much about it, just talk to me about it. You know, like, just talk to me about it. You know, Lord, you know what my situation is. You know that we need this. We need this, this business opportunity. We need this income. You also know that that's what's happening on happening with my daughter right now. And, you know, Lord, I need your help. I need your assistance. I need, I need you to help be a solution for me here, you know, and help me to focus. I mean, it's just literally, I mean, I find myself talking all the time to God through every single day. Like, Lord, help me to stop thinking that way. Or why am I distracted out over there thinking about that? Help me focus here, you know? So I think it is just a matter of you're always going to have that. And, you know, and, and so we're just, 
always going to have to still carve out that time if this is what we really, really want and need for our, for, you know, as we move forward. So I think it's, it's good, you know, and um, it's true, even for me, you know, both John and I, you know, we have, we're both at home. So, you know, we are home all the time. And that's the biggest distraction being home. It's like, oh, there's laundry to do. There's dishes, a uh, full sink of dishes. Okay, somebody just got hurt. You know, okay, you know, neighbor stopped by. I mean, it's like all the time crazy. And so I'm like, okay, Liz, every single day, focus, focus, focus. You cannot be all over the place. And, and it can be that way. So I just have to be very disciplined. Uh, and I, go ahead. And I, um, you know, one day when we meet at Stacy's, you know, some of us in the area, so the leaders in the area, because I think, you know, even, you know, talking to Sarah, you know, Saturday too, that's a real hard thing for her too. I mean, she has a couple of days now that Evie's at preschool, but, you know, and I have to like, you know, if we match up with like an accountability partner or something, um, to keep us on track and just say, you know, even if I know someone saying, Sarah, did you get it in tonight? And even if I, whether it's yes, no, just that you're saying, Hey, did you get it? You know, mm-hmm. I think for me, I, I need that, um, push, you know, or even if I didn't, what, whatever happened, we had teachers conference, then blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. What you want to make up for that. No, I agree. And we can put that in the leadership thread. We could say, hey, you know, for those that would like to have, say, hey, I want an accountability partner. Who else needs one? You know what I mean? And just pair up and go for it. And I know that lately we've been saying, everybody put your six list in there to hold yourself accountable every single day so you know exactly what you're doing. It's kind of your way of just verbally saying, okay, guys, this is what I'm doing. And then, yeah, we could we could go back in there and say, all right, did everybody accomplish what they needed today? You know? And if not, you know, are you doing it tomorrow? You know? So. I, I totally agree. It's a good thing. So I would say for you, definitely throw that in the leadership and say, I'm looking for an accountability partner. Who else, you know, wants this or desires this too? And then the two of you can just back and forth every day. I have, I have a gal that's not even on my team. She's a sideline sister. And we hold each other accountable every day too. We box. We box on the Boxer app, which is super easy. Are you on Boxer? I was, but then I... I found not that many people had been using it it off i love it it's awesome just very easy to just and i know we have the voice recording thing on facebook too so that's nice too it's just really nice Mm -hmm. to be able to talk into it okay cool i love that um how do people maintain a get it done attitude they think of themselves as self-employed if you want to achieve more and build your credibility with followers adopt that mindset it can take you far are you willing to go the extra mile number two Um, They're willing to do whatever it takes to complete the work needed by the organization. If you want to succeed, be willing to put the organization ahead of your agenda. Uh, Driven by excellence. Excellence is a great motivator. People who desire excellence and work hard to achieve it are most always responsible. And when they give their all, they live at peace. Success expert Jim Rohn says, stress comes from doing less than you can. Make high quality your goals. And responsibility will naturally follow. And then number four, they produce regardless of the situation. The ultimate quality of a responsible person is the ability to finish. In an open road, Richard L. Evans writes, it is priceless to find a person who will take responsibility, who will finish and follow through to the final detail. To know when someone has accepted an assignment that will be effectively, conscientiously completed. If you want to lead, you've got to produce. I thought that was really good. <clears throat> and then reflecting. Do you have anything to say about any of that, Sarah? Well, I had a, my next thing was in a, the bringing it home. Okay. But yeah, I mean, I like that too. When, the, when you offer that, but in the, in the reflecting on it, when an archer misses the mark, he turns and looks for the fault within himself. Uh, hit the bullseye is never the fault of the target. Mm-hmm. That's, I think that's just good perspective too. Yeah, but then don't be too hard on yourself because I, t- I think you tend to be too hard on yourself. You know what I mean? Like sometimes you can take it to an extreme where you're like, well, I'm just not this and I'm just not that and I'm just not that. Well, that's not how God wants us to speak because He we are his creation and his Holy Spirit lives in us. And so 
that makes us powerful people when the Holy Spirit is living in us. And God has made us who we are with a purpose and a plan. And we are the hands and feet of his. That's of, my thing. Of his message. So, so there, there's that part too. You know, it's awesome to read personal development, but, but God's word overall trumps. You know what I mean? So like, I always mm -hmm. go back to that. I'm like, although this stuff is awesome, my Bible is my guide because Jesus was truly the ultimate leader. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So remember whose you are and that you are a redeemed child of the, of the father, you know, who, who is dearly, dearly loved. And so, you know, find your confidence in that. I think a lot of us, we just feel like we just can't, you know, we were just like, we're, we, we shouldn't go out there. We shouldn't, you know, oh, you know, but, but Christ is in us. And, you know, you, when you think of all those things, it's like, we can, we can do that. We can speak confidently. We can believe, we can know, we can this, we can that. So, you know, that's the thing too. You can't just talk negatively to yourself and say, well, I just didn't do it right. Or, blah, 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 you know, cause we can definitely talk ourselves into, you know, doing nothing or feeling just less than where we are hold ourselves back from i always say you block your own blessing by your own mindset because god says in private proverbs as a man thinks so is he so if you think if you're thinking about things you know i'm not good enough i don't think i'm worthy enough to lead i don't think that i you know uh you know have the confidence to share this the health with people or to message them then we can block our own blessing when God's like, when he said to the Israelites, I've already given you the land. The land is already, already yours. And they just didn't have the faith to believe it. You know, they're like, Oh, it looks, looks bad. We should have gone back. We really should be back, you know, in the land. And God's like, it's right here. And you're not believing to take it. So there's that whole thought process too, where I'm like, he's already given it to us. We just have to step in faith and do it. You know what I mean? If yeah. That makes sense more um just because i see that happening so much in our you know youth and i see that school people have put the blame on someone else instead of you know mm -hmm. it's just so true in our our world today mm -hmm. <laughs> just not knowing how to take responsibility for your own sickening at times yeah i agree there's a bit of an entitlement issue Okay. Um, awesome. So then I so said, yeah, and the uh, bringing it home. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. No, 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 you go ahead. So in the bringing it home, I circled the. Uh, I keep hanging in there. <laughs> just keep hanging in there. You know, like the just the whole thing. Mm-hmm. It's, it's it's not even the part like the next time you find yourself in a situation where you're gonna mess with that. It's more like the I just needed that phrase, keep hanging in there. Mm-hmm. Basically. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean and I realize that like let like yeah. Okay. Sorry. I, I'd really no extra like I, I like sometimes I think I take I'm taking some of that I think of a leader like I know I've talked to this before like until the team my immediate team grow like I still let Steph do her thing with her team you know a lot of this I'm taking for what I have right now but like checking it away for when my team does grow you know mm -hmm. not saying I'm not trying to be a leader now but Steph has really taken the bull by the horns and run with it and I, and mm -hmm. and like part of leading is what her lead you know so like a lot of this I'm just taking tune it in for when the time comes for me you know Absolutely. when the next person jumps on the team and is ready to yeah ready to rock it or whatever well, and that's something, you know, I've been messaging everyone this morning and just saying, hey, let's get some coaching, one-on-one -on -one coaching calls with all you leaders. And let's start again doing that weekly, I like to call them growth group Zoom. So even though we have the big leadership group, then there's all of your guys' individual teams. And so um, that's where you guys can really exercise just giving your tips and your coaching to your team. You know what I mean? So uh, you'll be getting a message today. Mm -hmm about let's how can we do a one-on-one -on -one coaching call when can we do it and then let's start getting your team your stephanie together uh on a weekly 
coaching, talking, Q&A type of thing every single week just to connect, even if it's 20 minutes, every single week. So that's where you can exercise your wisdom, offer your tips, you know, and everybody can do that. So you're definitely leading no matter what. So, all right, admit what's well, and the, Go ahead. Oh, no, just other, keep hanging in there. The other night I met up with um, Kayla and, and Stacy for the, uh, dinner and drinks and stuff, and it was just, I mean, a lot of the talk about what's happening with, you know, all that came up, and it was just interesting that they're talking about where the air feels when you're here and then here. It's just, like, the different perspective of, of hanging in there, like, when you've been diamond or above and then suddenly your rank is ruby and you feel the, you know, their frustration different from my frustration. I've never been there. For three years I've been here. You know, it's kind of like, it was just interesting to hear we all are, we want, all want to hang in there, but we feel the hanging in there in a different level. Frustration, does that make sense? Like, mm -hmm. like yeah. they're saying, I don't know, maybe I would have rather never had it. And I don't know what I'm missing. But then yet I'm like, I've never even felt this. Like, and so my, my keep hanging in there is different than someone else's keep hanging in there. Like, sure. they know it's been possible. You know, like, it's just, it was, it was just interesting. Not, not that in, we're talking about that we're going to stop, but it was just like, mm -hmm. I'm coming from here and we're all just now like, mm -hmm. we got to make this move. You know. Yeah, totally. And it's different perspectives from both sides. And so awesome how awesome it is that you guys could chat about, well, this is where I've been and this is where you've been. And, you know, we've been all through the spectrum too. So it's it's kind of like you don't lose your, your belief. You don't lose your faith. You just keep moving forward. You just kind of dust, your, dust yourself off and keep getting out there and keep moving forward in faith. And you never stop doing what you did, if that makes sense. You just keep on. You just keep on in total confidence that God has this and that I can be confident because he's in me. So I love that. Um, okay, so it says admit what's not good enough. If you have trouble achieving excellence, maybe you've lowered your standards. Look at your personal life for places where you've let things slip. Okay, so I can personally say um, my health journey has been, there's been a little bit of, you know, I've put on a little bit of weight. And I'm still having struggle with getting back into the grind of a daily exercise, watching, you know, watching what I'm eating and all those kinds of things. So that is definitely, and that, crazy enough, affects many other things. And I think you, you know that, Sarah, as a runner every day, and if you miss that or if you just know, man, I only ran three times this week or two times, there's just something about that that throws things off. You feel not as healthy. You don't feel like your mental and energy is there. You feel like you're fat, you know, whatever that is. So for me, that's like a serious, that will bleed out no matter how much I think it doesn't or doesn't affect your confidence. It does. It absolutely does. So that's something that I'm going to admit that's not where I used to be when I was like on the top of my game in the best health, feeling so great you know, strong, lifting weights, running every day. And so that's something that I am like, okay, tomorrow's a new day. Oh my, am I going in and out? Yeah, but you have this whole time. I've been going in and out, so you can't really hear what I'm saying? Like this whole, no, I mean, like you'll freeze once every like 30 seconds. Okay. You'll be there and then you're gone and then you're, I'm I'm rolling with it. It's like it freezes, but it still catches up with all your words. Like so some, like I'm still hearing all your words. Your face just freezes for like three seconds. Gotcha. That makes sense. Cool. Okay. So do you do you understand? Do you relate to that? <laughs> um. Yeah, I was trying to say I don't. I don't know what what it would I I don't know I don't think lowered my standards I guess I mean much like I've just done so you know maybe my house mm -hmm. <laughs> but my house is always not clean <laughs> I don't know it's yeah I'm not sure yeah 
Well, find better tools. If you find that your standards are high, your attitude is good, and you're consistently working hard, and you still aren't achieving the way you'd like, get better equipped. Improve your skills by taking classes, reading books, and listening to, well, you can see this book is old, tapes. <laughs> find a mentor. Do whatever it takes to become better at what you do. So, oh, you know, there's often times where I'm like, man, I need to hire a personal coach. Like, I need a personal life coach. Because... This entrepreneurial thing is just, it's not easy. You know what I mean? It's, it's a very self-disciplined thing. And yet you're, you know, you're trying to do family and you're trying to keep your God first and you're trying to keep your business going and you know it, it's hard to juggle. I don't even have a full-time job in there. So um, I just think that's, you know, do what you need to do. And that's why I'm like, you know what? I just need to constantly be reading something because that helps me with my mindset. It helps me sharpen my skills. Anything on that? Well, no, I just think find the better tools. Like, um, I've been given the tools and I just haven't. And I guess I, I mean that by, you know, it says you consistently work hard. Well, I haven't. I, I mean, I'll be the first to admit I, I haven't got my power. You know, like, you and everyone else have been such great leaders and saying, what to do to be successful and I haven't applied it in the right way. You know, so I think that I, I have the tools. I need to use the tools and I'll be the first one to admit it. And that's awesome. So I think, you when know, you just start, by, and I was going to say, when you start using those tools, your life, your, your, your business will reflect that. You know what I mean? And that, that's the same for me. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. I, I'm preaching to myself. I'm not perfect and I don't do what I always need to do every single day. And um, I'm more one that beats up at my, on myself when I don't. It's like, Liz, you could have done this, and why didn't you, you know? So I think that's awesome. The first step to recovery is admitting you have a problem, right? <laughs> and I'm willing to do that, too. So that's awesome. Yeah. Okay, daily takeaway. This is so funny. He said, I was playing pole vault, and I and I've got too close to the wall, and I fell over the wall. This is a prison inmate. When I regained my senses, I ran around to try and find a way back in, but being unfamiliar with the area got lost. Next thing I knew, I was in Chico. People seldom realize how weak their excuses are until they hear some from others. <laughs> it's like, oh my goodness, that is like ridiculous. But the, he's saying people's excuses are that ridiculous. You know, and I agree. We definitely mm -hmm. have some serious, like, oh, I couldn't do that today because whatever, you know, so interesting. All right, 17. We still have to go 17 and 18. So here we go. Security. Competence never compensates for insecurity. You can't lead people if you need people. Oh, this was like a, oh, aha chapter. No man will make a great leader who wants to do it all himself or get all the credit for doing it. So it talked about Ronald Reagan. And let me see here. Oh, this is where uh, Thatcher, Margaret Thatcher, the minister, Margaret Thatcher, this was really good. A woman must know when a man is simply being or being simply childish. So it talks about her and her just total amazing uh, overcoming and being able to get into politics and member of parliament, calm under fire. She was asked by her party to face opponents in debate. Her skill and conviction may have been fired by an attitude. She learned from her father who told you, you don't follow the crowd. You make up your own mind. I thought that was really good on the top of 120. Um, do you have anything with that that you wanted to share? No, I just thought it was, well, I thought it was interesting. I just, I haven't thought it was an interesting part. I love reading stuff like that, but I, I, didn't, I guess I didn't have anything in particular. I just thought it was very well said. Mm -hmm. Well, on, on 121, it says, Margaret Thatcher, right at the top, appeared to have no doubts about herself or her beliefs. She was absolutely secure in her leadership as a result. 
That is the case for all great leaders. No one can live on a level inconsistent with the way he sees himself. Man, that's, that's really, really, really key. Again, that's Proverbs too. As a man thinks, so is he, you know? You may have observed that in people. If someone sees himself as a loser, he finds a way to lose. Anytime his success surpasses his security, the result is self-destruction. That's not only true for followers, but it's also true for leaders. Insecure leaders are dangerous to themselves, their followers, and the organizations they lead. Because a leadership position amplifies personal flaws, whatever negative baggage you have in life only gets more difficult to bear when you're trying to lead others. So this is really good for me to, to look at too, because I'm always, again, I'm always like, okay, what can I do better? What am I not doing quite right? Um, they don't provide security for others. So this is people who, in, insecure leaders, they don't provide security for others. You cannot give what you do not have. Uh, people without security cannot make others feel secure. And for a person to become an effective leader, the kind that always the others want to follow, he needs to make his followers feel good about themselves. Number two, they take more from people than they give. Because of that, their focus is on finding security, not instilling it in others. They are primarily takers rather than givers. And takers do not make good leaders. So I, I thought of Kim's, the three things from that team player. When you're looking for, are you a team player? Which one do you need to get better at? Being hungry, being humble, and having those people smarts. I thought that, that right away was like, okay, when it says, you know, uh, be a giver more than a taker. So those, those three key things when you're looking for a great team player just kind of came to my mind. What else do you have? I mean, I got tons of stuff, but I want you to chat too. If well, it kind of, both in the fleshing it out and the um, bringing it home and it, then I was talking about give away the credit. I found it kind of ironic. I mean, I you kind of have done it before. Like, I think one of my, gifts is that I can build people up but I can't build myself like it's hard for me to like I've crap to say the least um and she is not positive about anything um she has no positive reinforcement at home she thinks she's stupid she's I mean yes yeah, she comes to me for reading help but she's not stupid I mean she's and everything with her, her first thing is negative. I'm not going to do this. This is my worst score ever. And because I'm, she actually I can work one on one with my others are in groups. I've been really able to, you know, I tell her we're going to turn everything positive. I don't want to hear, you know, you're a beautiful young lady and you have a lot of gifts and this is what you know. So I just like, you know, do that a lot. And the teacher, um, I class the other day actually after she left, she said, Sarah, you have a real gift of helping people see the best she said she needs that because she doesn't get it at home you know so when i read this i'm like i can't you know like it's i get i get at times i'm like frustrated i know she has all this at home i don't have anyone at home putting me down or but that's just i've always been hard on my you know so it's like one of the things i love to do is to help people and you know, let, help them see the best in them, especially the kids I work with, because they have a lot going against them. But yeah, it's hard for me to do for myself. You know, I would, I, yeah. So that's just the whole last part. No, I totally get that. Um, okay. And it's funny because they always say, I've heard that whatever you give a lot of is what you need. Isn't that interesting? Like if you're an encourager, then you need to be encouraged. You know what I mean? Like my mom is such a like selfless, always helping other people, always speaking life over people, sending me messages every day. Have a blessed day, Liz. So my mom is definitely someone who encourages everyone, but forgets to encourage herself. And so, um, you know, when you think of those, those people who are just constantly doing everything for, for everybody else, it's, they're also crying out. They need to do something for themselves. So it is interesting. What you do is what you need the most of. Yeah, and but I like I feel like I don't struggle with that in all areas of that. Like I feel like that's here, <laughs> and it work. You know, like I feel like I don't know. I suppose I do that as a mom. You know, like compare my health to other people's, and you know, and that's more a comparison. But I feel insecure. Like I don't have play dates because 
other moms would see what my health looks like, you know, and, or, you know, but like, I'm confident in my work at work, I'm confident, you know, like in that kind of stuff, but maybe because this is out of my realm of what I'm used to, mm-hmm. you know. So pray on that. You know, those are things to totally pray about. You know what I mean? Like those are things that I have to put on a list too, just to, just to pray about, you know what I mean? Always. <clears throat> I get that. I think a lot of people can relate to what you're saying. And it does say get some help. If you cannot overcome feelings of insecurity on your own, seek professional help, get to the root of your problems with the assistance of a good counselor, not only for your own benefit, for, but also for that of your people. And, you know, I think everyone could use a good counselor truly <laughs> because we all have, we all have stuff. We all have garbage. We all have baggage, you know, from just whatever it is over our years of living. And so I don't think it's a bad idea to have a Christian friend who's, who's, who's willing to just chat with you. That's going to give you good sound biblical encouragement. I don't think it's a problem. If you want to talk with your pastor every so often, just say, I just really want to talk through these things and I need some spiritual encouragement from you. And you know, where does it say in this Bible? I'm feeling this way. Can you help me find in the Bible? You know what I should focus my mind on. What is God saying? So I think that that's a good thing to do. You know, it's good for people to do that. And then 18, let's go right into 18, self-discipline. The first person you lead is you. Ah, so how well do you lead yourself? I couldn't, ah! even, I couldn't even get past the title. <laughs> I, I couldn't even what? get past the title. I underlined it. Isn't that just like, like I should stop. I'm like, this is all going to be about me. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's totally. And it's I did, and I highlighted both. The, I, I started both the first quotes on there on that page. Yeah. A man without decision of character can never be, be said to belong to himself. He belongs to whatever can make captive of him. Ah! I'm like, no, this is not good. Okay. It's a tough road to the top. Not many people ever reach the place they were. They are considered one of the best at their or a place where they are considered one of the best at the work. And even fewer are believed to be the best ever. Yet, yet that's what Jerry Rice has achieved. He is called the best person ever to play wide receiver in football. So it goes through, you know, what was his real key to success? Self-discipline. When everybody else was sitting on the couch, right? And eating bonbons and popcorn and watching movies. Right. Like, I'm going to do some more work on my skills. There's something wrong with eating bonbons. <laughs> no, no. I highlighted um, the bottom about when he's running up the hill, you know, and then he walks to the locker room, and then he came back, and he said, "Don't quit," because once you get into that mode of quitting, that then you feel like it's okay. And I think that's for a lot of people. Oh yeah, you better believe it. You better believe it. That's why these people share all these, you know, these, these authors and stuff share this because a lot of people will read it, but very few will put it into action. That's why we hear so often the 1%. That's why you hear, you know, millionaires and billionaires, I'm not saying every single one of them, but millionaires are billionaire, you know, the ones that have, have built businesses and, and weren't afraid to be self-disciplined and get, go out on a limb to start a new business or start a new concept. And, and that's because they're different than the masses. They're absolutely intentional every single day. And, and I'm not saying they're all good, but most, you know, the, the people that you hear about, they're usually the most giving, loving, and you'd never know it because they look like a normal Joe person. You know what I mean? They're just normal people walking around and they see the masses are doing this, but I have a vision to create this and, you know, start, uh, giving the jobs to all the rest who are just aimlessly running around. So I'm always like in awe of people who are able to do that. Cause that means they have amazing self discipline, amazing, you know, feel the fear and do it anyway. You know what I mean? Like I have a vision and I'm going for it and it's, it's what creates the jobs for our world. So I just think that was awesome too. Um, so then let's see, let's see page, 128, fleshing it out. So again, he, Jerry Rice is a perfect example of power of self-discipline. Um, no matter how gifted a leader is, his gifts will never reach their maximum potential without the application of self-discipline. It positions a leader to go to the highest level and is a key to leadership that lasts. 
So here we go. Let's just quickly go through. If you want to become a leader with self-discipline as your asset, follow these action points. So he even lays it out for you. Develop and follow your priorities. Anyone who does what he must only when he is in the mood or when it's convenient, is it going to be successful? I'm like, oh, goodness. You know, like that whole, I don't feel like doing it today. Well, that. Circled one, two, and three. You had one, two, and three? Yeah, I mean, as for me, like, they're all, I get it important, but for me, I, to apply to me, one, two, and three were, because they all kind of tie into what I said before. I mean, a lot of it is back to the intentional, um, you know, the power, it, like, making that a priority and being disciplined about it, and challenging the excuses and the excuse eternal things running around. Mm -hmm. You know, so for for me, those are the ones that for me hit, like. Yeah. And even the fourth one, removing rewards until the job is done. If you lack self-discipline, you may be in the habit of having dessert before eating your vegetables. I was like, ooh, that's, that's a good one to be reminded of. And just the system. Have a system. Have a system. What is your daily? And our, our simple system is our six list. Our other simple system is our steps to success. And I think we all overcomplicate it. To be honest, to be truthfully honest, I think every single one of us complicated. And I think like Joel Dunn and Cami Dempsey and those black diamonds and those top leaders, they don't complicate it. They say, what do I need to do today? I need to reach out to this many people because it's a numbers game to find the, the Bob and Sue that want this. That's all I'm doing is I'm shuffling through thousands of people to find the Bob and the Sue who want this, who need this, who are looking for health and wellness, who are looking for the financial opportunity. So we do overcomplicate. We think things through. We go, oh, I don't want to message that person. What if they hate me if I ask them? You know what I mean? And those others just, just brush it off, don't even think about it. You know what I mean? I think that yeah. makes a difference. Talked about staying focused on results. You know, uh, when you're facing a, a must-do task and you're thinking of doing what's convenient instead of paying the price, change your focus. Count the benefits of doing what's right and then dive in. And then how about reflecting on it? Talent without discipline is like an octopus on roller skates. <laughs> There's plenty of movement, but you never know if it's going to be forward, backwards, or sideways. I'm like, oh, that's hilarious. Sometimes, sometimes you read these books and like these quotes, these people say, and like, that's what, like, I would never, like, I just can't, like, how did you think of that? How did you, like, I don't know. I just, and that's kind of why I love reading. I love. And isn't it so true? That is such a good, a good analogy. Okay, so to improve your self-discipline. So he tells you, sort out your priorities. List the reasons. Get rid of excuses. And the last page is, um, a nursery in Canada displays this sign on its wall. The best time to plant a tree is 25 years ago. The second best time is today. Plant the tree of self-discipline in your life today. And, you know, I think, geez, it's like we, we say all the time, you're, you're, this is your business. Today can be a brand new, total different walk and journey for your life, a different focus, a different commitment to say, you know what? My power hour is every day. If, it, if it, for some reason it's not in the morning because of, you know, child was sick, it will be at this time during the day. You know what I mean? Any last closing thoughts? This was awesome. Yeah. No, I, I guess I don't have anything. It's amazing how it takes an hour. Of... Oh, say that again? Sorry. So are we doing a book after this book? Don't you think we should continue? Well, I, I really like it because um, it holds me accountable. Me too. This is one thing I can, and now, now especially when I'm back at work, because every hour the kids silent read. So, I mean, there's no, pro I have no excuse not to read, you know, but I think it, I mean, so I know I'd get it done, but like, I think it, I don't know if I'd say it holds me accountable, but the fact that I then speak it to somebody else, like, I've now said to Liz 500 times, I need to do a, I need to get disciplined. You know, like, I think it's just, it takes that extra, there's all this great stuff in there. 
but it's kind of like I am a very visual learner. I am a very tactile, like, it's kind of like the same. I, I need to, I can read it, but I need to then, like, uh, speak it, put it on paper, you know. Yeah, I was going to so say, then, then, it, then open up your calendar and write it in, you know. When is yeah. my power hour? When is my this? When is my that? And, like, for, for me, I, I think for me, like, to be able to take that personal development and then, you know, talk about it and hear about it with others. Like, I really enjoy it. I don't know I do others, you know, like, I, I don't know if they feel that way too, but, um, so yeah, I mean, I guess I was just asking because if there's a next, a new book, I would order it, you know, like, whatever. I realize we have another week left of this one. But. We have one more week left. And next week I'm going to be in Florida. <clears throat> so we're going to not be able oh, to yeah. Week because we're gonna I'm gonna be at the women's first it works faith conference so mm -hmm. I said we could do it the next week which is like the 20th so I thought well no wait no 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 it's not the 20th it's the 26th and that's when hot that's when Thanksgiving and stuff people are gonna be wherever and family and stuff so I figured but I hate to like push it off too far so then I'm like what if we I would like to get it done before Thanksgiving, wouldn't you? Because I think if you wait too long, then all of a sudden we won't finish out the book. And I like to just be a finisher, yeah. get better at finishing things. So I feel like if we did it, even like a Monday, Monday can be kind of crazy with the Divine Alliance. And then now we get into, you know, one-on-ones with everybody in the evenings. It gets to be a little crazy with the groups and the coaching calls and that. So I didn't know if Sunday – to finish it out, like Sunday the twentieth is what I had said in the thread before. Like do, a like do it on a Sunday night before family call or something. Or yeah, I thought either, I either Sunday the twentieth. I'll just put it in the thread and say, all right, guys, I'm looking at either the Sunday the twentieth or Monday the twenty first, because I think as we move into the and then into Thanksgiving, it's just going to be we'll end up not finishing it. So oh, I'll, right. I'll, I'll put that out there and see what's best, and then we'll just go for it. Let me just uh, uh, stop the recording so we can just chat. People don't have to listen to all this crazy jazz.